Hi there. So let's address the, the practical part of the lifting line theory method. So in the lectures, we talk about the, the theory also with Professor Bataro. You address this theory and at the end of the, of the size, you, you have the solve exercise. So this is a classical textbook example. Okay. The origins of this, so this case is a paper okay it's all one but it's still valid and you have it in the in the in the material that you downloaded okay this is the paper and this is the name so as you go if you go into your material okay and should be here papers and you will you will find many papers but you need to look for the this one okay now this one but there are many papers with different cases so this is here we have the description of this wind okay so this is a comparison of experimental results and also calculated using this llt method in this case it is implemented in, the, in this paper uh non-linear one that takes viscous effect okay so let's see the steps how how, how it's done so here in your lectures notes, you have all the steps, okay? The, the geometry. So remember that it's very important defining the geometry and knowing the characteristics like the whole area, aspect ratio, everything. So that is just a little bit of ge ge geometry, okay? Also remember that we need to know the 2D values, okay? The slopes, but also the zero leaf angle of attack, okay? Which in this case is minus 1.2. Okay, so that is calculated in ECFOIL. Later, we're going to see that XFLR5 calculated that automatic and we have all that information available as soon as the, uh, we define the geometry and also we have this 2d data of the airfall we just solve the monoplane equation okay so we divide the wind in different stations in this case here in this work example is divided in four stations okay so each station you develop this equation okay and then you compute all these coefficients the end all remember that we're interested in solving for a1 a3 or a5 or 7 so at the end all the information is contained here so as you get here you can compute cl in this way okay so here look at that we're using in this example is using four uh of just for a station probably it's a little bit low probably is the, the minimum that you can use it's not very accurate but it will give you a good value but it's better to use something about 10 or 20, but don't go values 100 is not necessarily. And then also, so here you see the comparison of the theory and then the experimental results. So it's a very good agreement, okay? And also the leaf distribution. So also in the material, we I show you that you have there uh, how uh, this Excel workshop. So here you have all the equations that are, are in play. So this is basically this case that you have there is the Burton, okay, this case, the Burton win or probably the civils, uh, the civils. Okay, it's where it's defined as the civil case, you have the paper there. So here we have this definition. So remember that in the monoplane equation, you have two contributions. You have the wake model, the one that we add that correction due to the downwash, the 3D effects. And then here you have the section model. You put everything together and you get to this discrete equation. So here, this equation that we, we add, uh, you, we, we solved it using uh, sine series. Okay, so this integral there, we put sine series and we can solve that. So what we have here is that the, this is the geometrical definition. So look at the, you have some comments here. Okay. So we're going to do if redo it in Excel. Then we move to, to XFLR5. So you define your aspect ratio, taper ratio. Okay. Then the angle of attack. So this exercise is done. The one electrons you have is done at four degrees. Okay. So see that we assemble, we give all the, geometry okay so b remember for us is the tip to tip span here b2 is half the semi span you have all that information here available and then we have the tip at the uh, the core at the rod and tip okay and the number of span wise extensions that we're using for so basically what we need to do is that we subdivide 
the wind like this okay so in this case we have four stations so if you go back also here you will see that you have this this angle here this angle is just corresponds to this okay so kind of a conformal mapping so you define an angle and then you just find the distance okay you can also give the distance so this is done a little bit now historical though everything all these methods were we're associated also with some conformal mapping, so people like to keep like that. So you reduce the angle, you will have more stations. So the idea is this angle, you have this distance, and then you measure and you put it there. So for each of those extensions, you define the angle, remember that it's in radians, and then you compute your distance. So this is the complete win or half the win. Then you compute the core, okay? So for each of these distance that you have, okay, so in this case, Okay, we're measure like this, half win. Uh, we compute the core, okay? So here you have the equation, okay? And this is the equation there. Then we start to compute the series, okay? So in the equation, in the monoplane, um, uh, monoplane equations, you go back, you will see that you have a series of signs, functions that we're computing here. Okay, so this summation here corresponds to the number, no, uh, number of stations. So the actual minimum that, that, that you need to add is, is four, probably it's too low, but for this working, this is a hand working example, we can do it. So see that now you compute all your functions, then you have mu, remember this one, you are adding all the airfoil geometry, so it will correspond to this here. So all the airfoil information you added, you compute it in this way. Uh, I just want to point out here that I'm using S. S is half semi span. Probably in your lectures now, also I think here you have 4B. So S is what is equal to B half, so it's 4B. So I like to work in that way. And you have all your, your coefficients. After having all those coefficients, you go and you assemble your linear system. Okay, this is your linear system. So you compute everything. Okay, so this is simple, easy algebra. So as you see, you can program, program this really easy using MATLAB, Python, whatever. It's just a for loop. And then you assemble your system. You have your coefficients. Okay, so you have here A and B. And we want to solve for X, which are the coefficients, A1, 3, 5, 7. So we are only getting here the odd coefficients because we, we are working with a symmetric distribution. We can also work with a symmetric, for instance, you, you have alerons and stuff like that. You will add also the, the even contribution, even or not. It's a little bit more, it requires a little bit more algebra, but pretty much the same idea. Okay, but for the purpose of designing the wind, we're interested in using the symmetric contribution, as we have also a symmetric wind. It might happen that you have an asymmetric wind, so you should consider that. So here we solve by simple matrix inversion, and then we get all the coefficients. Okay, so as you recall from your lectures now, that in these coefficients, four sections, four coefficients, you have all the information contained. So see that you go and look at CL, computing in this way, so as you look at your lecture notes okay you will see here the results okay we have it here then all the other coefficients computed in the same way again also you can go to the paper okay this base win that we're using is this one so we, we are solving for exactly the same case this is the airfoil okay we know all the characteristics of this airfoil the slopes and also the alpha l0 watch out is zero so as you go here, you will get the value. You will see that the value is a little bit higher, okay? Because here, we're, we're in, the, in the case, there are more stations, more accurate, but we are there. Then CD, CD induced. So remember that this is a potential method. We don't have any viscous correction, no, no viscous information. So we only can compute the, the induced drag that depends as we live, okay? So we compute it in this way. If you want to compute the total drag, you will need to add CD zero, okay? So you can go to tables or previous experience and you can get an idea what is the C CD0 of this one. Okay, you can compute the, the slope of, of here, or in this case, like this. Okay, and then the final part, and remember that here in the induced drag, you have this coefficient delta, okay, that depends on the rest of the coefficients. Okay, so delta is computed like this. So we use A1 just to compute CL, and then to compute delta, okay, the induced drag factor, you use all the other coefficients. You compute it, you put it here, and you get your value. So we have here 
CL, CDI, CDI. So these are non-dimensional values. Now we can go to the practical part. We want to design this wind for a given condition. So we know that we can compute lift in this way. So we know all the information, okay? You have CL, just compute it, just put the values and you can get it. So for instance, in this example, look at that. If our target weight is 400 newtons, kind of a 400 kilos, so what velocity you, 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 and for this angle of attack, what velocity, uh, what velocity you should fly to get, to produce the minimum, the minimum lift. Okay. That is our idea, designing a wind to stay a lot, a lot. So it's telling us that 77 uh, meters per second. Okay. So at this point, this information you pass to the guys designing the power plan. Okay. So you know, your velocity, you know, also the, 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 the drag of this win or the whole configuration and then trust needs to be equal to drag and then the guys will will design the engine to produce that power but we're interested in lift okay so also you have density so remember density change with altitude so for instance you go higher okay maybe your density will go to one and see that you produce less lift you will need to correct by increasing velocity to 85 in this case and then you have your lift you can also increase your angle of attack so for instance in this case we're working at four okay so let's go for instance one degree clear okay that it will be lower the lift okay let me go back to one two to five okay sea level and see that is half so to produce the required lift i need to increase velocity okay so if i go 120 there we are okay this is the minimum lift that we need to to stay off so as you see very simple method four se uh, sections and even you can use this excel workshop to, to to design any win okay within the restrictions of this theory okay so we mentioned that there are many restrictions but also there are restrictions but if you stay uh low speed subsonic it works wonderful okay so this case here that i show you okay was this civil case but also okay let me go back and let me set up this worship to the original state okay let me do some a few and here Okay, so the original state, um, 1.5, okay, so we're there. So let's address another, okay, before that one, let's also see how to set up this case in, in X, XFL R5. So you launch the program, okay, and you're going to get that window. Let me close here, so just to show you that when you launch the program, okay, you're going to get uh, this white window, okay. Uh, here in XF, uh, XFLR5, you have also Eggfoil included and the model for 3D design. So basically what we want to do, okay, is that we want to design that exactly the same example that we, we just saw, the civil example, which is this one, okay. So there you have all the geometrical characteristics, okay. This is a little bit geometry, how to design this. I not go into details, but just to show you also in the material that you download, you should have this case included, okay. So there is this case, data files, uh, no, sorry, it is uh, ba, 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 ba. this one, you have this file, and then there you are going to have civil wins, and you have already the solution. So I'm going to open, civils one okay so as you go to mobile open the project and open in civils win one and here I already did the whole definition for you okay later you can reproduce this but here you see that you have exactly the same win as the paper okay so here you have different buttons for different things that you want to see. So here we're in airplane view we're seeing the airplane you go here you have all the polars here you have the span wise distribution if you want to see that that information okay so see that i click there i get access to that so here since i'm not working okay and these two that you have here for stability and this one is not used okay so we're just interested in, in this three so see that we're running the case so it's like running the, the to the case so remember that here we're taking to the information so it's very important that we need to generate so as you go into module see that in module you also have access to egg full direct analysis 
Okay, so in this case, what we did is that we get, went to this model and see that we ran the case for different Reynolds number. So this win has taper ratio. So each section will see a different Reynolds number. Okay, so according, we have a design velocity here we compute, we do some corrections and iterations, and we compute all these Reynolds numbers, okay? So if you have a rectangular win, you know that it's uniform, but in this case, different Reynolds numbers, so we need to compute, okay, all the Reynolds and we run the case. So in this case, uh, X, XFLR5 if, if is is non-linear. It takes the viscous da data as well. If, if I want, we can disable that one, but it doesn't it, it does it, it doesn't change anything it runs the same so it's better to run also biscos to get that information so see that here we have two airfoils and basically we cover a lot of reynolds numbers to be sure that we're in there my advice when you are doing these studies later i'm just showing you the case setup later we're going to to set up everything okay do the increments in steps of a hundred thousand, okay, one million, 1.1, 1.2, and so on, okay. Because what is doing a, 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 the software is interpolating the solution from section to section. So, so you go and look back at the division by sections. Basically, you have information here, and then you linearly interpolate it from here to here to here, and so on, okay. So that is what is done. That's why we need to cover now all those Reynolds. So after we do the to the the, 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 the 2D runs, you can put all the profiles. You go back to wind design here, okay? So in wind design, you can design your airplane here, okay, current. So you go define new plane and you can define everything. We already have a plane here. So we go into current plane and you can modify it. In this case, we only have a wind. We don't have elevator, fin, or, or fuselage. So just the wind. We go here, edit wind and see that you enter now in this new window and here's where you do the definition of the geometry. So when you are defining things here, you are just defining one win. Okay, so be careful that you have your geometrical data. Okay, here is how, uh, is, is, well, this is the correct one. So if you have this pan, you divide it by two. Okay, so you simply give that information. Okay, so see that we go from here to here. Then we have the core information also. So in the problem definition, you have the core give the core tip and root and then the offset this is to control again this is just geometry so this is to control the 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 sweat back angle okay this angle here so in this case is leading edge and just on geometry this is off offset this is an actual distance okay this is not angle so as you go 0 0.2 okay or, or or one you give more more sweat so remember that the llt is doesn't see this effect even the non, non linear doesn't doesn't see this effect to to solve for this we need to use uh, the vortex that method or the full panel method but in our case also we saw that we're just interested in that for higher speed we're not in higher speed so here we're keeping the, the, this, the original design, and then diagonal. this is the incidence angle of the wind, okay? This is not the angle of attack, be careful. This is the design angle. No, this is, uh, sorry, this is the, the angle for the stability, okay? You define this one. So also for us, we have seen that this is, is will change a little bit the leaf, but it's not a problem. And as well, the LLT is kind of doesn't, don't, don't, uh, this angle doesn't modify the output of the LLT. And then this is the twist, okay? So this is the actual geometrical twist of the wind. Okay, you are not defining here all angle of attack, this is geometrical twist. So you put here, for instance, two, and here minus six, and see that you have your twist, and this is how you control it. So for instance, if you are designing a wind and you want to have an incidence, incidence angle or settling angle of the wind, that is the structural angle, the fixed angle. You put it here too, or whatever you want, and you control that. Okay, this is not angle of attack. This is your structural angle that, okay, you cannot change and fly. You fly, you change your angle of attack. Okay, so our standard original definition, all the case that we're solving for the for zero, and then here you add your airfoil. So remember that previously we run, and here you access that information. Okay. So for instance, we have also the NACA information. You can select it with no problem. So see that I go here and now we are adding aerodynamic twist. Okay, so at the root that you have this airfoil, at the tip you have this airfoil. And all the information that you run in Eggfold, it is contained 
here automatically. And then the software will do just the interpolation and solve the problem. Okay, so let me go back here like this. And that's all, okay? After you are satisfied with this one, with this definition, you can add more sections. So we have here just this one to define, but you can add more sections. You save, okay, uh, okay, and then you are ready to run. Okay, so to run the case, remember that you run like, like in 2D, you need to set few angles. So here, we're not interested in going, in going high, we just want to be in the linear part. So usually, minus four, eight, minus four, eight, or 10, it is okay. You run with, for these values, and voila, here you go, your solution. As you see, super fast, you can run many calcul uh, many computations fast. I want to point out that this is nonlinear. We have a stall, so this, this method can compute CL max. Is your, you, you use a fully potential linear method that you cannot compute this stall. You use, we talk about the critical section method, okay? You can use that one. For the moment, we're in, not interested in that. So as you go here, you see in a little bit, you will see that at four, you have a value of something about 0 0.48, whatever, okay, a little bit, 49. So see that is pretty much accurate, the, the Excel value. Okay, so you have all your information, okay? So remember that here in graph, you can choose different configurations, okay? So you can choose all for graph, okay? To graph or single for a graph, okay? So if you put all, you get this. I like to use four graph like this. And then is you right click in each graph, you can choose what information you want to see. So see that here, we're looking at the induced drag information. So this is a polar induced drag CL. Go okay, recall how it's computed, okay? And recall that it's shifted a little bit, this is the cura to it. So now let's change that one. Right click and go here, current graph, define graph, settings, and you choose whatever you want to see. So see this total drag, so if you put it here, now see that recall that we're using the method that is that is non-linear, that we have the viscous information coming from the airfoil that is linearly interpolated. So see that now we have CD0 and now our polar here. Also, we're using the CD6 airfoil that have a drag bucket that you don't see here. So recall that we also took that the induced drag is a very large component, and this very large component usually tends to hide that information of the airfoil. Case. So if you want to see if you have that kind of drag bucket, you should look only at, at the viscous component. So if you go back here again, define graph, you s choose the viscous component and see that kind of here you have your drag bucket. Okay, remember that here there are some interpolations at 3D win, but here you have that information. But that induced drag is a very large component and usually tends to hide all that information. So it's up to you to pick up what you want to visualize. You have everything there, okay? So in this case, I like to put CD here. We have, I have alpha gain CL. You can go also and plot, probably will make more sense to you, define graph and you put uh, alpha in function of, of leaf force, which is F set, okay? This is your leaf force, okay? And then see that here for four degrees, you have you're producing this amount of leaf. Somewhere we define the velocity, we're going to see that in the, in the other, okay, when we do the setup for a scratch of, of a win, okay? So basically it's here, you have your velocity. So this is how the, the brief introduction of the case, just to recall what is the problem. So that's all for this video. In the next video, we're going to do everything from scratch. So we're going to design the win the platform of a rectangular wind, okay? We're going to do the example that we were working in the class, this, this geometry, okay? So thank you for your attention. See you in the next video. Bye.